One day, ladies will take their computers for walks in the park and tell each other, My little computer said such a funny thing this morning. We can only see a short distance ahead, but we can see plenty there that needs to be done. I'm afraid that the following syllogism may be used by some in the future. Turing believes machines think. Turing lies with men. Therefore, machines do not think. Yours in distress, Alan. Sometimes it is the people no one can imagine anything of who do the things no one can imagine. I believe that at the end of the century, the use of words and general educated opinion will have altered so much that one will be able to speak of machines thinking without expecting to be contradicted. The isolated man does not develop any intellectual power. It is necessary for him to be immersed in an environment of other men, whose techniques he absorbs during the first twenty years of his life. He may then perhaps do a little research of his own, and make a very few discoveries which are passed on to other men. From this point of view, the search for new techniques must be regarded as carried out by the human community as a whole, rather than by individuals. The original question, can machines think? I believe to be too meaningless to deserve discussion. Do you know why people like violence? It is because it feels good. Humans find violence deeply satisfying, but remove the satisfaction, and the act becomes hollow. It seems probable that once the machine-thinking method had started, it would not take long to outstrip our feeble powers. They would be able to converse with each other, to sharpen their wits. At some stage, therefore, we should have to expect the machines to take control. A very large part of space-time must be investigated if reliable results are to be obtained. The popular view that scientists proceed inexorably from well-established fact to well-established fact, never being influenced by any unproved conjecture, is quite mistaken. Provided it is made clear which are proved facts and which are conjectures, no harm can result. Conjectures are of great importance since they suggest useful lines of research. Instead of trying to produce a program to simulate the adult mind, why not rather try to produce one which simulates the child's? If this were then subjected to an appropriate course of education, one would obtain the adult brain. A computer would deserve to be called intelligent if it could deceive a human into believing that it was human. It is not possible to produce a set of rules purporting to describe what a man should do in every conceivable set of circumstances. The works and customs of mankind do not seem to be very suitable material to which to apply scientific induction. Hardest time to lie to somebody is when they're expecting to be lied to. It is possible to invent a single machine which can be used to compute any computable sequence. If a machine is expected to be infallible, it cannot also be intelligent. 
No, I'm not interested in developing a powerful brain. All I'm after is just a mediocre brain, something like the president of the American Telephone and Telegraph Company. Programming is a skill best acquired by practice and example, rather than from books. Science is a differential equation. Religion is a boundary condition. We may hope that machines will eventually compete with men in all purely intellectual fields. Those who can imagine anything can create the impossible. Mathematical reasoning may be regarded rather schematically as the exercise of a combination of two facilities, which we may call intuition and ingenuity. Machines can never think as humans do, but just because something thinks differently from you, does it mean it's not thinking? Machines take me by surprise with great frequency. Instruction tables will have to be made up by mathematicians with computing experience, and perhaps a certain puzzle-solving ability. There need be no real danger of it ever becoming a drudge, for any processes that are quite mechanical may be turned over to the machine itself. Codes are a puzzle, a game, just like any other game. When we want to sink a convoy, we send out an observation plane first. Of course, to observe is not its real duty. We already know exactly where the convoy is. Its real duty is to be observed. Then. When we come round and sink them, the Germans will not find it suspicious. I like solving problems, Commander. And Enigma is the most difficult problem in the world. When people talk to each other, they never say what they mean. They say something else and you're expected to just know what they mean. Advice about keeping secrets. It's a lot easier if you don't know them in the first place. We are not asking whether all digital computers would do well in the game, nor whether the computers at present available would do well but whether there are imaginable computers which would do well. We do not wish to penalize the machine for its inability to shine in beauty competitions, nor to penalize a man for losing in a race against an airplane. The conditions of our game make these disabilities irrelevant. Suppose Mother wants Tommy to call at the cobbler's every morning on his way to school to see if her shoes are done. She can ask him afresh every morning. Alternatively, she can stick up a notice once and for all in the hall, which he will see when he leaves for school, and which tells him to call for the shoes, and also to destroy the notice when he comes back, if he has the shoes with him. The view that machines cannot give rise to surprises is due, I believe, to a fallacy to which philosophers and mathematicians are particularly subject. This is the assumption that as soon as a fact is presented to a mind, all consequences of that fact spring into the mind simultaneously with it. It is a very useful assumption under many circumstances but one too easily forgets that it is false. 
A natural consequence of doing so is that one then assumes that there is no virtue in the mere working out of consequences from data and general principles. A man provided with paper, pencil, and rubber, and subject to strict discipline, is in effect a universal machine. 